So by now, it's common knowledge that Samsung prepares two different versions of their flagships. For US and China and for South Korea, they give out the Snapdragon version and for rest of the world, we get Exynos versions. When it comes to their performance and battery life, these two phones behave very differently. But can we say the same thing about their camera? This video is about that. I put these two cameras next to each other and I've tried to cover multiple scenarios. And both of these phones are running the identical software version, the April Security Patch. So let's check it out. As you guys know that Samsung's S20 Ultra can do recording in 8K. So this is a sample coming out from the 8K resolution on both these cameras. I don't see any difference to be honest in terms of colors or saturation or the highlights or the shadows. Everything that you see here is very, very similar to each other. I mean, it's just a small hair of a difference when you compare the color of sky here. Everything else looks very, very similar. I don't see any difference and looks like the footage has come from the same camera. So there is no difference in terms of 8K. Let's move over to 4K and try to understand are there any differences when it comes to 4K. Again, to start with on 4K front, everything looks very similar on both the cameras. Sharpness is very close to each other. Colors look very similar. I don't know what do I say. I mean, I need to be very, very closely looking at it to be nitpicking on things. But still, I do not think that I will be successful in calling these two cameras apart in any of the ways. The processing is very similar. The color gamut is very similar. Highlights and details are pretty okay. And when you move over to the HDR scenarios pointing directly towards the sun to understand how they handle it, I think there is a hair of an advantage for Exynos here because it controls the sun in the background very nicely and has slightly brighter shadows. Let's move over to the focus part of it. We know that S20 has been suffering from focus issues from the beginning and I think it's apparent here in this video and especially on the Snapdragon part. So Snapdragon version here is not able to focus as good as the Exynos version is focusing. You see the details are so sharp and crisp on the Exynos version but on the Snapdragon version they are not very sharp. They are sort of soft and blurry. Whether the foreground or the background, in all the scenarios, Snapdragon's video is sort of soft and blurry. But on the Exynos one, I think it's doing a better job. I wouldn't say Exynos version is also doing a tremendous job with focusing here, but it is definitely better than the Snapdragon version of S20 Ultra. Let's move over to the night scenarios and you would notice that both of these cameras have trademark Samsung issues, which are very soft videos in low light. This is a problem that Samsung has been suffering from a very long time and I can say that till date it is not yet fixed. But in terms of footage, the comparison between these two cameras, everything is very very similar from both of these cameras. Colors look very similar, highlights look very similar, but when you compare the focus part, it comes back to haunt the Galaxy S20 Ultra with the Snapdragon version here. You see this part, it's pretty bad. Anyway, let's move on to the pictures now. Pictures is a very different story when compared to the videos. Both the cameras are doing absolutely tremendous job in capturing the pictures, whether it's the highlights, whether it's the colors, whether it's the details or the sharpness, everything is very, very similar on both the cameras and both the cameras are doing or taking pretty good pictures. Whether it's the main angle or the wide angle, in all the scenarios, pictures are very nice looking. I really cannot, you know, take out any differences in terms of colors or in terms of saturation or in terms of sharpness. They're very, very close to each other. But yes, there is a slight difference in terms of how they process colors. Like here, for example, the red color looks different on both the cameras. Snapdragon was slightly closer to the original tones and the Exynos was slightly more saturated. So yes, we've been looking at this debate for some time that there is difference in terms of performance and difference in terms of battery, etc. So yes, that way Snapdragon and Exynos are very different. But in terms of pictures or the camera processing, I don't see a huge difference here. Everything is very, very similar. Both cameras, I really don't know what to call out here. Which, which, I mean, I'm very curious to understand what do you guys think looking at these pictures? Do you think that one camera is better than the other in terms of details and the sharpness or anything? Tell me in the comments below. So yes, you know that S20 Ultra has some crazy 100x zoom. So let's start looking at the differences and zoom front. So we go from 0.5x to 1x. Then all the way we move over to the 30x, things look very similar on both the cameras here as well. And then let's go all the way to 100x. I don't see any differences in terms of sharpness, details, it, it's just great. And when you move over from zoom and come really close to the subjects, I would say the focus issues, yes, they troubled me while clicking these pictures. Exynos was quick to lock into these subjects, but Snapdragon version wasn't very quick to lock into these subjects. It took a while. And then the major difference is the HDR here in terms of pictures. The S20 Ultra with the Exynos processor does a slightly better job in terms of capturing details under the shadows. 
in the foreground and also controlling the exposure in the background on the sun here. You can see how it, these two pictures are different. Whether it's outdoors or whether it's indoors, the HDR was always better on the Exynos variant of Samsung's S20 Ultra. Looking at the selfies now, there was also this difference which was quite apparent. The color tones are very different on both the cameras. Whether it's portrait mode or the main mode, things look very different. The skin tones were slightly different on both the cameras. And I can say that Exynos version S20 Ultra was slightly warmer compared to the Snapdragon version of S20 Ultra. Apart from that, everything looks very close to each other and I don't think you can go wrong with any of these cameras. I'm just trying to nitpick here. In isolation, both of these cameras are doing tremendous job, especially in the time of daylight. Both these cameras are like neck to neck with each other and there's hardly any difference between the camera output. Yes, you would notice there is some sort of uh, warmer tones on the S20 Ultra with the Exynos version and Snapdragon slightly tends to move towards the natural tones of the pictures. Apart from that, everything looks very similar. Now this was the time when the sun was setting down and this was twilight zone completely and if you would notice, you would realize that how that HDR issue that we face during the daytime still troubles the Snapdragon version of Exynos here. You see this part of the car is very clearly visible on the Exynos version of S20 Ultra but on the Snapdragon version, it is not very well lit up. Beside that, I think both of these cameras are doing a pretty good job and are very even in terms of their performance. You can put them in terms of some sort of theme that these two cameras have. The Exynos version has slightly brighter overall pictures with a very small grain of warmer tones and Snapdragon version has more natural tones when it comes to these pictures. Let's move on to the deeper nights now when the light completely goes away and you would continuously see that both of these cameras are doing a tremendous job whether it's indoor lighting or the outdoor lighting, things were pretty, pretty good and pretty close to each other. And you would also notice here that Snapdragon sort of pushes ahead with respect to the noise control in the background. And I think the S20 Ultra with the Exynos version gets slightly better colors. So these are the examples without the night mode and when you summon the night mode, things look little different. See if the color gamut on both the phones is slightly different from each other. Although I would say the sharpness is slightly better on the Exynos version versus the Snapdragon version. And when you point these cameras against some bright lighting, you would notice how Snapdragon sort of excels in controlling the noise in that situation. So, so far, which one are you liking better? Are you able to call any differences between these two cameras? Because I cannot. If you show me blindly, okay, which picture is better, I think I would call them equal in both ways. I really don't see huge difference in these pictures. Apart from Snapdragon versions prowess in terms of controlling the noise in the background, which is apparent in almost all the pictures which have bright lit objects. Otherwise, sharpness, colors, details, when you're not focusing them on many bright objects, things look very similar and both the cameras are doing tremendous job. I think Samsung's night mode is sort of really good now and you, you are able to capture really nice dramatic scenes of the streets now. And when you move over towards a little more challenging lighting situations where you have very small help from the light falling around on the objects, you would see how the Exynos version of the S20 Ultra goes on aggressive noise control and sort of loses the detail. And you need to be a little careful while using the night mode on these phones. If you have some good amount of light, I don't think there is any need of using the night mode these days. The huge sensors on these cameras are anyway capturing a good amount of light, which brightens up the picture anyway. So there is no need to summon night mode unless you are in a situation which is really, really dark. So I think it comes down more on the implementation side of things. I think both of these cameras are really good. They just do things slightly differently. But yes, Snapdragon version has the focus issues still and Samsung needs to work on that. Those issues really trouble you when you're trying to take some videos or trying to take some pictures. Suddenly the phone loses focus and you have to work hard for it to lock on the focus. So what are your thoughts about the camera performance on these two phones? Tell me in the comments below. Hit a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe if you want to watch more of my content. Thank you for watching guys. Cheers.